Hi, my name is Laura Robinson. I'm a sales technology specialist with Microsoft Dynamics CRM Online. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at how you can create a custom entity as well as custom fields in CRM through the Data Import Wizard. This is a continuation of the first topic that you see here where we're adding fields and, and configuring forms in CRM. And the method that we're going to use to create a custom entity in those fields is through the Data Import Wizard. And so this is a, one of the topics that we generally cover in our admin webinar that's live every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So let's go ahead and get into the demonstration. This is a demonstration environment that I created. It's actually just a 30-day trial and it is brand new. I did some configuration for the last video. And so with this one, what I want to do is go ahead and select Imports. And we're going to choose to import some data. Now, if we were importing to one of the standard entities, and we'll cover this in another video, we could choose to download a template for import to do that. But in this case, we'll go ahead and just import data. And what I'm going to import is a, is a spreadsheet of partner data. And partner is an entity that I have not yet created in CRM, and it does not come out of the box as one of the standard entities within CRM. And so I have a spreadsheet of just 10 rows of data, just basic data containing partner name, partner type, start date, and so on and so forth. So this is all brand new data as well as a brand new entity and brand new fields to this environment. So let's go ahead and browse for that file. And this is my partner custom entity. I want to grab the CSV file rather than the plain Excel file, so I'll grab the CSV because it's one of the listed file types here, and I'll hit Next. And confirm these details. And now when I'm, when I'm asked to select a data map here, I can do a couple different things. If I was importing from Salesforce.com, I might want to choose one of those data maps, or Business Contact Manager, or if I had saved a, a data map previously, I could select that one, but I don't have one that I've saved. And so what I'm going to do is just choose default where we're going to do some automatic mapping. Now the next step, it's going to ask me what entity I'm mapping my source file from, or to. And if I scroll down here, I've got every entity out of the box that I have access to importing to. And partner is not yet one of them because I haven't created it yet. So let's go ahead and create new entity. Now an entity, you might know it as an object, you might know it as a data table. Um, in this data import wizard, we refer to it as a record type, and that's fine, it's all the same thing. And I'm just gonna clean this up. I'm gonna give it a record name and a plural name, so the database knows how to refer to it, and list a primary field. And so this is our primary key if we're thinking about a data table that we're creating. and it gives me the green check mark, and I'll go ahead and hit Next. So the next thing I want to do is map up all my fields, and remember, because this is a brand new entity, we're basically creating brand new fields as well. Now we just created the primary key for partner name, and that's a required field, my only required field right now. And I'm going to map up the column called partner name to this. And anytime you do a data import, I encourage you to really closely look at your required fields at the top because they're easy to miss. Um, they don't have a yellow mark or a green mark next to them. So make sure you go through and, and you're mapping up all your required fields appropriately. So the next thing we're going to do here is create some custom fields. And these fields are going to be stored within the partner custom entity. And so certification level is a new field. And this type of field is one that we're going to call an option set. And so within my certification levels, I've got basically just gold, silver, and bronze, just some generic data. And I could import it as a single line of text data type, but to set myself up for a better reporting in the future, I'm going to create an option set. And this will also help my end users choose the right option. Um, rather than having to key in, you know, just plain text. So it's looking at the file and it's finding the source option values and I will create the corresponding option values in CRM and hit OK. 
city is a new field that I will leave as a single line of text and if I wanted to I could create this as an option set as well email same thing go ahead and create that fax we'll go ahead and create that as a single line as well main phone main phone number that one too now partner name as you may have noticed I made an error here so um, I'll go ahead and change that now our, my required field is partner name and what I want to do is create another option set for partner type here and if I choose option set you can see here are my corresponding option type values that I've got listed in my source I'll create the same ones in Sierra now if I wanted to I could do some other actions here I could ignore a value or not map it um, but I'll go ahead and go through with these values. So you want to make sure that your spreadsheet is super clean before you import it with the right values. Do a little scrubbing there. Now primary contact is a unique kind of field and ideally what we would want to do is create what's called a lookup field and create that to look up to a contact. Now we could also create a brand new field that's a you know just a, a a line of text but our contacts in CRM are going to be pretty centralized here and we want to make sure that we keep it as you know one bucket of data and we can when we do create a lookup we can create that relationship at the same time between the partner and the contact however for data import here um, you should know that when you do have a lookup you need to make sure that the data that you're using that column for contact does in fact look up to an existing contact record. So this is a little bit of a catch here uh, because if it doesn't exist, if that contact that you're trying to look up to does not exist, it's going to not import that data. So in fact, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm basically going to just, I could e either ignore this or maybe I'll just create a new field that's a single line of text. We can adjust it later. Start date, I'll go ahead and create a date and time field. State, this is another one where I might want to create an option set. And choose the values here, hit OK. And we can add to these later. And we'll go ahead and map out the rest of these. And the rest of these are pretty straightforward. OK, so once I've mapped everything or created a new field, I've got the green check mark. I'll hit next and just confirming and I can make any changes at this point by hitting the edit button. And now on this final page here it's, it's asking me if I want to allow duplicates. Now this is in reference to the duplicate detection rules that we can set in the uh, settings area and because I'm just creating a brand new entity, new fields, I don't really have to worry about that but I'll just leave it at no and I can select an owner for the imported records. Now another point about this is that if we've got specific owners that we want to assign records to, we can do that either in our file and it will pull those, those users within the file if they exist, or we could have a workflow running behind the scenes on the partner entity to automatically assign those records out once they've been created. So you're not stuck to just one owner for any imported records. And I'm gonna give a map name here, so I'll call this data map partner one just in case we need to grab this map and then edit it in the future and I'll hit submit and so now it's creating those custom record types and fields and then it'll give me another verification window where it's actually doing the data import so again we're killing two birds with one stone here we're creating the the custom entity and the custom fields and we're also importing our data at the same time okay so we get a confirmation page I'll hit finish we can check out the status of our import here in the import section in my workplace and I'll go ahead and hit refresh and we'll basically continue to check on this until it completes alright so after one more refresh here we've got 10 successes um, no partial failures no er errors now if I want to I can drill into this import name and get any details here and see those records that did import and the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and see those partners fully imported 
we want to make sure that our custom entity and our custom fields are actually published in the right way. And so we created those custom fields and a custom entity, but, and the data exists there, as you can see, um, but they're not laid out in the right way because we've basically just created it in the database. We haven't told the database how to lay it out on the form or told the application that. So I'm going to go ahead and close this window and drill into the settings and into customizations and customize the system. And we'll go ahead and find that partner entity and make those adjustments. So let me pull open my entity tree, find the partner, and as you can see, it's got just the generic custom entity icon next to it, so we'll probably want to change that at some point in the future. And just on the partner entity itself, I'm going to choose some of these other settings. So I'm going to choose to display this in the sales area. I'm going to enable connections, sending emails, mail merge. I'll leave queues blank because it doesn't make too much sense here. I'll enable it for auditing as well as Mobile Express, Reading Pane in CRM for Outlook, and Offline Capabilities in CRM for Outlook. So with that, I'm going to save these changes, and I'm not publishing them, publishing them yet. I'll publish all customizations in just a, a minute or two. Once that's updated, I'm going to drill into my form. Now it creates both the main and the mobile information forms out of the box. Let's look at the main form, and this is the form that appears to our users through either the web access or the Outlook access. And it pulls up our form designer. So you can see here, and I encourage you to watch the previous video on just basic configuring fields and forms in CRM for the admin because now I can take this and go ahead and drag and drop fields that I created. Let's go ahead and pull some of these in here. Partner type, we'll add, and I can change these around at any time. I might go ahead and insert a tab for address information. Let me name my tab. <laughs> Hit OK, and I'll put in street 1, street 2. City, state, zip. We'll go ahead and add um, email address. And we've got some leftovers here that I I haven't yet captured. I'll add fax. We'll add website in here. And so on. And there are a lot of other changes I could make here. I, I would probably want to add a header, um, maybe modify some of the navigation items on the left. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and just save it. Save and close. And at this point, I'm going to publish all customizations. So it's going to establish that entity in the sales area and enable some of those things we chose to enable like email and connections and offline access. And then it's also going to modify the form that shows up. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that renders. I'm in CRM. I'm going to just ref oops, choose to refresh the whole thing just to make sure all of my changes took place. It'll land us back on our dashboard. So from there, we'll navigate over to sales. We don't have to wait for it to load. And we can see here right away that once I navigate to sales, I've got partners listed here. Here are all my partners that I imported, about 10 rows. If I open up one of these partners, I've got all of the data that I imported and laid out in the form that I specified. So really nice way to, again, kill two birds with one stone. We imported data, but we also created that custom entity and created custom fields. Now you can follow the same process with data import if you want to import custom fields to a standard entity like accounts or contacts or opportunities. Same rules apply. You can just go ahead and, and make sure when you're mapping your fields to uh, create a new field at that point. So with that, thank you for your, um, your attendance, and I wish everyone a great day.